In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set the size for a selected object. Now, in version 12, in the 3D view, you can actually click on an object or a vector, and you can set the size by using the transform handles. You can see them all the way around the object. So you've got them in the corners, top, bottom, left, and right. And you can drag these out. So if you notice, I do it towards the top left because I chose the top left anchor. If I do it to the left, it will, of course, stretch it to the left. And if I use another anchor, for example, the bottom right, it'll stretch it towards the bottom right. Now. If I hold shift and use any one of these anchors, I can stretch or set that size out from the middle. So space it evenly out from the middle. But there's also some extra handles we now have in version 12 where we can use these floating fields to set a specific size. So if I click on the outside of this vector and I click this black anchor here, it brings up my x axis value. Now currently it's 7.2523. I can enter 8, hit enter, and it scales it in x. And then similarly, if I do it, if I click this anchor, I can do it in y. So I can type 8, hit enter, and it will scale it in y. So I'll actually take that value and use it on this vector to allow you to set the size. But there's actually a dedicated tool for setting the size of a vector or object. And it's this one just here called the Set Selected Objects Size Tool, uh, or T on the keyboard for the shortcut. So if we click into that, you can see we've got a couple different options. So we have the Scale Selection option, or you can scale items individually. So if you scale selection, we can simply just scale whichever item is selected. So I can scale this one Let's say I want to go for 0.5, and if I've got my option for link x, y linked here, any value that I enter in x or y will link these two, which means the height and width will be scaled in proportion. If I uncheck that, I can set individual values for these. So I'll put 0.5 for each. And if I hit apply, you'll notice it scaled that item or just that individual item because it was a scale selection. Now, if I select multiple items. So if I just click and drag, I can scale these items individually or I can scale them all together. So if I scale them all together, if I do them to five and one, it will scale all of them together. Whereas if I do it individually, it will actually scale each of these items individually. So if I do 0 0.25 and 0.25, each of these will now be scaled individually in that selection. You've also noticed that I have a job aligned box here. So what is that job aligned box? Well, what I can do here is if I click on that, this is going to scale this to this box around here. You can see I've clicked my object and this is the job aligned box. Now, if I rotate this using the rotation handle here, you'll notice I get a rotated bounds. And now what will happen is it will use these new rotated bounds instead to scale that item. And I can also set the anchor from where it scales from. So if we do middle for now, and if we link X and Y and we go for seven, hit apply, it has scaled it in that rotation handle. So let's go for a lower value, and there we are. Whereas if I change my anchor, and I set that now to five, and hit apply, you notice it scales it towards that anchor, so it's gone towards the top left. If I do it towards the top right, and hit Control Z, uh, you'll notice when I hit Control Z there, it actually undid the change we just did, which was to go to the top right. So Control Z will also affect that. But if we go to top right and we change that to five and hit apply, it will scale it towards that top right anchor because that is the anchor that we have selected. And of course, you can change the units here to be percentages instead. So if you want to scale this down from what it is, which is currently 100% down to 50%, you can do so by entering a percentage value, hit apply, and it'll scale it in the direction of the anchor view set but also to the percentage that you've set as well. And that covers how to use the set size tool in the software.